సరే 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 సార్ఓకే వి విల్ స్టార్ట్ ది సెషన్ సో వెల్కమ్ టు డియర్ పార్టిసిపెంట్ సో గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ సార్ స్పీకర్ సార్ ఓకే ఓం కార్ సార్ హాయ్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ మనీ కెన్ యూ హియర్ మీస్ ఎస్ ఎస్ సార్ ఓకే స్టార్ట్ ది సెషన్ సార్ సో టుడే ప్రోగ్రామ్ షెడ్యూల్ ఈ సో ఫస్ట్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది స్పీకర్ Uh, sir we have the break sir uh, 8 to 8 10 okay and uh, you have to close the session at 9 o'clock sir after that uh, uh, we have the 10 to uh, 15 interaction session sir okay na sir uh konkar ramakrishna yeah. tarun is a data scientist enthusiast passionate research scholar He did his M.Tech Artificial Intelligence from University of Hyderabad, M.Sc. Computer Science from Osman University, B.Ed. from R.I.E. Mysore. And he attended quite a few of online and classroom courses in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Also received course completion certificates from various MOOCs, including Stanford University, EDX, 
Coursera and Triple IT Hyderabad too. He has around 10 years of immense experience in software industry. He wears several hats as a data scientist, mobile app developer, web developer, classroom trainer, and AI ML mentor. So thank you, sir, uh, accepting our request. So please uh, take over the session, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, so hope I'm audible to you. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay, so um so please share this uh, your uh, yeah PT sir first. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I have given the uh, co-host. Okay. Okay. Uh, hope you are able to see my screen. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, so, this is uh, Omkar. Uh, as introduced, uh, so I'm working as a data scientist at TCS. I uh, have around 10 years of experience. Um, so, here, uh, I hope that uh, uh, most of the participants are from academics and uh, you have. Uh, um, uh, plenty of experience, like 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years around. So that is very nice to see. Um, uh, but but uh, just to make it simple, um, uh, considering the students as the participants, faculty as the participants uh, from various domains, not only from CSE or uh, AML, uh, uh, expecting the participants from the other domain. So I. Uh, thought of making this session as an introduction to AML. So, uh, but uh, uh, in any case, like if you feel uh, that content is already familiar to you and then you're already working in AML, so please bear with me. Um, I, I also uh, will try to um, um, use my experience, industry experience uh, to answer your questions. Like if you have any questions to uh, if you want to know like how it has been used or uh, uh, what uh, okay what use cases you can solve and so on so maybe you can uh, let me know um, so that we will make it uh, uh, make the session more interactive okay so um, but uh, I also will try to uh, provide the uh, various uh, resources uh, or the useful links references from where uh the um uh you can you can uh, you can explore aml in depth um and you can practice uh the various uh, concepts that are there in the aml and deep learning also and also like i'll uh, try to uh, uh cover uh what are the online uh, resources online ides or online environments where you can practice this AML deep learning uh, for free of cost. And then uh, you might be aware of those environments, but uh, in, in any case, like if you are not uh, um, coming from the AML domain, probably you will find it more uh, interesting and useful. But uh, the people, uh, if you are from the AML domain, probably this will be a short revision kind of view, okay? So uh, that is the, uh, brief disclaimer I thought of uh, putting it uh, together uh, before you, before I start the session. So, may I know like uh, uh, how many are, uh, how many of you are already from AML uh, domain that you are already 
uh, teaching in a, uh, AML or uh, pra uh, practicing the AML. Maybe you can just, uh, if you want, you can unmute and speak or else you can just provide the uh, your response in uh, chat window. I just want to know, like, if you are from already from AML, um, just want to see, like, how many of you are from that AML background. Hope I am audible to you. Ah, yes, audible. So you carry an answer. You carry an uh... Okay. Okay, so just uh, um I got a couple of around five are uh, already from AML to mind. So I think rest of you will definitely like, uh, okay, uh, you'll, you'll find it more uh, useful, okay. So this is the introduction to AML. And um, so AML is not new. Uh, it is already there uh, right from 1927. Uh, here you can see. So, Uh, from 1927 onwards, uh, uh, people are talking about uh, AML, especially about the artificial intelligence. And then uh, right from 2022, right? So we are in 2022 and still we are uh, um, uh, working um, using the AML to solve most of the problems, right? So uh, the, how the AML is uh, useful in recent days is if you find the COVID uh, uh, COVID situation, um, we, we developed uh, most of the products using the AML, right? So uh, the typical uh, products like um, uh, raising an alarm if, if the uh, people are not following the social distance, right? If there is a crowd uh, in any public area raising an alarm and then indicating to the nearest uh, um, personals, right? or, or uh, um, wearing, uh, developing the product which, which detects whether the person wear is the, wearing the mask or not, correct? And if the person doesn't wear the ma mask and just uh, uh, again, uh, raising the alert, okay, uh, please wear the mask and follow the COVID guidelines, right? So uh, like, like this, I mean, they are the simple use cases, but um, they are typically developed using the AML. I'm, and more importantly, the deep learning, right? So uh, we have been using these uh, AML uh, uh, used products uh, in in day in and day out, right? Every time. So this is the um, evolution of the AI over the years. Um, uh, if, if you think the, uh, if you talk about the artificial intelligence, the term that is uh, introduced by John McCarthy, that is in 1955. From there, we have been uh, talking about the artificial intelligence term, right? Followed by the machine learning and uh, in 1957, and it's coined by Arthur Samuel. So these two are the major breakthroughs uh, that actually uh, started um, talking about the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, over the years, and but the significant um, research is being done in recent years, right? If you just think about uh, uh, around 2010, uh, 2012, uh, from 2010 and from 2012 onwards, we are actually talking about uh, the deep learning part, right? And solving most of the use cases, most of the problems using the deep learning. But uh, why, why so much gap actually, right? Starting from uh, 1955 uh, or 1952 to 20, 2012, right? 2012, why, why is, uh, it took so much time to actually uh, bring the, um, the AML or deep learning into the picture and making use of those, con both those things for, the, uh, hum for making human life easy, right? So the major challenges includes uh, the 
um, memory, right? Memory and processing uh, power, memory and speed, and the data. So the three important things that we talk about are uh, first thing is about the data, second thing about storing the data, um, and then uh, and and then processing the data. So this is the these are all the three important things that I that actually uh, plays major role when we talk about AML, right? So that's why uh, uh, it took a lot of time to uh, use the deep learning in real life uh, situation, because after uh, uh, people started using the internet, then data started flowing, right? So we see uh, TBs of data now. Okay, uh, if you have a mobile phone, you can generate GPs and TBs of data, right? So that is uh, th that's very important uh, thing to remember. So uh, we now have large amount of data. Okay, everywhere we see the data, data in terms of pics, uh, data in terms of pictures, right? Uh, they are the images, data in terms of text, uh, they are uh, blog posts, tweets, right uh, news articles and so on and data in terms of uh, um, video uh, they are the uh, recorded videos or movies okay uh, or web series and so on data in terms of audio uh, like podcasts or uh, um, songs okay so we have data that appears in any any form so we, we started using this data uh, and then we started solving the problems. But what was not there is the memory, right? We don't have sufficient memory to uh, to actually uh, uh, store the data, right? Store the data. But nowadays you can see, um, earlier we were using the flop disks, right? Floppy disks, earlier we were using the floppy disks. Um, they are very in MBs, 512 MB. Right, and just uh, we used to see the 512 MB properties. Are uh, if you are too much older, you you see only the um, 5 MB, 10 MB uh, disks, right? But now you are seeing uh, the uh, devices which holds uh, TB sub data, which can say the TB sub data, right? So that is the important thing again. So we started uh, developing much more efficient RDDs, okay. RDDs uh, to store any amount of data, right? And uh, we also now seeing the cloud, okay? The cloud, like uh, you have the uh, major cloud providers like uh, AWS, Azure, GCP, and so on. So even they are also providing the uh, place, okay? Um, where you can uh, store the uh, data, okay? That is the memory they are offering. Uh, it's not just sufficient if you want to have the um, memory, you also need to process that, okay? It's not saving that. You also have to process that, okay? For that, you, you are seeing the GPUs, right? Earlier, we have only CPUs, okay? Uh, uh, it, it took a lot of uh, days, weeks together, months together to train a simple uh, ML model, right? To solve a simple classification problem, it took a lot of uh, days, including... Um, um, a couple of weeks and uh, so on, right? But now we, you have the GPUs and you also have the TPUs, right? So like this, we also started uh, um, de uh, developing uh, uh, developing the most efficient, okay? Most efficient uh, um, processing units, okay? Processing units to solve these problems. So that's why uh, now, uh, in recently, like uh, starting from 2010 or, okay, or so, you started uh, talking about the uh, deep learning very uh, frequently, okay? Uh, and be, that is because of these three these three things. And, and, and this is my opinion, okay? So uh, uh, that's why, okay? So you may agree or may not agree, uh, but uh, I feel that because of these things, it took a lot of years to start using them, right? So that is the important thing. Um, and then if you are from sports background, uh, the major breakthrough, again, uh, one of the important thing happened, uh, uh, the um, Deep Blue beating Gary Kasparov um, uh, in chess, right? So uh, that's where people started believing, okay, uh, machines also can, can actually uh, predict uh, human actions, 
right? And then take the necessary steps. Uh, so that that's where like uh, uh, they started building the uh, the products. Uh, uh, that started building the machines that that, that actually mimics the human behavior, right? Yeah. So uh, if you think about the uh, the machine learning, what is actually the machine learning? Maybe academics point of view, and uh, um, uh, we see the more um, interesting definition uh, that is about uh, this. Right? Machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Right? The important thing here to note is. Uh, this one without being explicitly programmed right so we can we can solve any problem just by putting the conditions okay you write the uh, set of conditions set of rules okay and then you can solve the problem but the rules may not hold valid every time may not be valid every time right so you have to uh, develop the machines that actually generates the rules okay the machines or models should generate the rules you should not write the rules Okay, they have to be developed uh, or uh, generated by this machine. That's where you can generalize and then you can solve any problem related to that, right? So that's where the machine learning comes into the picture. You are going to generate the rules uh, or uh, you are going to make the machine to learn the rules uh, by providing the sufficient data. So that is the important uh, uh, thing to note. Um, and this definition is given by Arthur Samuel. Um, so, uh, but people also started talking uh, about the machine learning. Uh, most of the most eminent uh, uh, people like Bill Gates, okay, uh, uh, and the uh, Hennessy, president of Stanford, okay, they started uh, talking about these uh, uh, things uh, about the machine learning. Uh, yeah. A breakthrough in machine learning would be birthed in Microsoft's, right? That means if you can build any product uh, that can actually leverage the machine learning, uh, and if you if if you develop a product and if, if it gets traction, okay, then uh, it's going to be uh, you're going to have a startup like Microsoft, right? That beats the Microsoft. That means if you leverage uh, the AML effectively, and then if you uh, develop any products if you solve any problem uh, uh, the real life problem we are going to uh, we, we are going to uh, make use of that like anything okay so that is the important thing to know so uh, that's how i understand that so machine learning is the hard new thing to try okay and it is uh, um, actually uh, uh, this is the statement around 2010 or so right so that means um, if you want to try, you try in machine learning. If you want to do anything, you do that in the machine learning field, like that, right? So, um, and, and that was the time to uh, explore uh, machine learning or deep learning to solve any uh, real-time problems. Uh, if you uh, think about how this is happening actually, right? So how a machine learning is different from traditional programming. Uh, and this actually gives more interesting uh, insights, right? So what are those? Uh, in, in the olden days, like you are going to uh, do this, right? Uh, this is how you are going to uh, write the program or solve the problems, uh, okay? Uh, what happens typically is uh, you, are, you are going to write a program, okay? You are going to write a program and you are going to provide the inputs to the program and then you process that and you get the outputs. You get the outputs. Outputs are uh, coming, okay, the end results. Outputs are end results here. Okay, to get the outputs, you are writing the program and you are giving the inputs and then you are getting the outputs, right? So that is, that, that's what happened in the traditional uh, programming perspective. But when you talk about the machine learning, here uh, the different things happens. Okay, so what is that is you are going to, um, you are not going to write the program, right? You are not going to write the program. Rather, what you're going to do is you're going to provide the inputs as well as outputs also. Okay, that is the main interesting thing here. You are going to provide the inputs as well as you are going to provide the outputs. 
Now, what your system has to do is to take these inputs and take the outputs. Now, find out the relationships. Okay. Now, you find out the relationships or you draw the uh, rules. Okay. You generate the rules. So, rules, those satisfies these inputs and outputs. Okay. And that's where uh, the program or the model is generated as the output, right? As the output. The, so the uh, what we are going to feed to the computer is uh, not the inputs and the program, okay? J just like above. We are going to provide, we are going to feed the inputs and the outputs, okay? And the outputs and, we, and looking into these inputs and outputs, the program is being generated or the model here, okay? The model is going to be generated and that can solve any problem related to this okay that is the interesting thing and that's where if you look into the any machine learning problem okay if you want to generate a model right if you want to generate a model you are going to uh, you are going to provide the inputs right you are going to provide the uh, train data and you are going to provide the train labels right you are going to provide the train labels and that's where you are going to train the model, right? So that is data and the labels both you are providing. That is input and output, both you are providing, right? Both you are providing. And once the model is trained, you are going to uh, now pass only the, uh, the test data and you don't pass the labels. You are going to just pass the test data and you are going to get the labels out of it. That is the predicted labels, right? You are going to get the uh, predicted labels out as output right? and that's where you are you are now finding out okay um, if your model is trained properly and accurately uh, then uh, your your uh, predicted labels are going to be very effective very effective right so this is uh, how you are going to relate the uh, the machine learning problem versus the traditional problem uh, any questions He can carry sir in interaction session. So he can okay. Have... Okay, right. Yeah, thanks. Uh, if we just look into uh, the same uh, definition, like how it is going to be uh, um, working out in the in the simple problem, like uh, uh, identifying the digit, right? Identifying the digit. Uh, that is the problem here we are trying to solve but how it is related to the uh, the uh, machine learning how do we correlate this to the machine learning problem right so uh, here we are talking about three things uh, we are talking about the task t and we are talking about the performance measure p and we are talking about the experience e right uh, there are three important things here task t performance p and training experience e uh, now, what is the task here? If you look into this problem, what is the task here? You have to identify the handwritten digit, right? You have to identify the handwritten digit. And this, uh, if you uh, if you have the clear AML experience, this is called a classification, okay? It's a classification because given any digit, you are going to say whether it is zero or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? One of these things is going to be. So it is a classification problem. So this is the task that we are trying to solve, right? Now, what is the performance measure P, right? Performance measure P, you are going to say, you are going to say, uh, how many digits are correctly classified, right? how many digits are correctly classified? I mean, the percentage of digits. Out of 100, if I give 100 digits, so how many are correctly classified? That's called accuracy, right? The performance measure P talks about the accuracy, okay? Accuracy, when you talk about the classification. So that's the performance measure P. And what is the training experience, right? The training experience E is, it talks about training the model, right? So we are talking about the training the model. How it is going to happen? 
So this is, uh, you're going to have the data and you're going to feed the data, the data set of digits, okay? You're going to uh, train the model by using this data set. So to solve any problem, you need to have the data set in hand, right? So you are going to take the data set and going to train the model. The training experience is train the model, okay? If you have these TPE, okay, in your hand, TPE, then we are going to talk about uh, the, oh, when do we say a program is set to learn, right? A, a computer program is set to learn. So we are going to say like, if the experience E, okay, with experience E, with respect to some class of task T, and that is the classification task T, right? Task T and performance measure P, the, the performance measure P. If, if the performance at task T as measured by P improves with experience E, okay? Improves with experience E, that means, you are going to see the performance measure. This should be keep on increasing, right? Performance measure P, it should keep on increasing, uh, okay, as long as you're training the model, right? With the experience E means, okay, if you're training the model more and more, more and more, the accuracy should keep on increasing, okay? The performance measure P should keep on increasing and at task T, okay, we are going to solve one particular problem at a time, that's a classification. Uh, at that task T, if the performance measure P keep on increasing, as you keep on training, as you keep on training, then you can say your model is, your computer program is going to learn. It's going to learn from uh, the data set, okay? So this, this is the, case with everything, okay, with with everything, like it may be a classifi classification, if you know the different problems, right, different problems in AML, uh, you can see uh, the problems like uh, classification, you can see the problems like clustering, you can see problems like regression, right, the same thing holds, okay, these three are important problems. Uh, that we that we see in AML, right? In in, in AML, when we talk AML, it's deep learning, including the deep learning. Okay, so we have the problems from these areas. So there is a classification problem, there is a clustering problem, there is a regression problem. Okay, the problem can be anything, but the PTE holds same. The PTE holds same. So the task is, it can be a classification task, it can be a clustering, or it can be a regression task, okay? And the uh, experience E, definitely it is like training the data, okay? It's training the data and performance measure P is your, uh, what kind of problem that you are uh, solving and how are you measuring? Performance measure is how are you measuring? It can be a, uh, based, on, based on the problem you are going to solve. We are going to have it. Yeah. So, uh, in in case of classification, it's called accuracy. Okay. In case of clustering, it is it can be uh, it is called uh, the cohesion. Right. Cohesion or uh, the strength of the cluster. Right. Uh, in regression problem, you are going to see the um, a, a error function that that should be minimized, like MAC kind of. Right. You are going to have. Okay. So that, that is a university I Okay, so you are going to have uh, the performance measure P uh, is specific to the problem that you are solving. Okay, that's the thing. So uh, when we talk about the um, the differences, right? We have been talking about the artificial intelligence, machine learning. Okay, and uh, uh, deep learning, uh, how, how they are all related to each other, right? So um, we, we have these three, which are interrelated, okay? One is um, subset of other. So we see the, the, uh, the deep learning is, uh, okay? The deep learning is subset to the machine learning and the, um, okay, and the machine learning is subset to the artificial intelligence, right? So uh, overall, like if you are, uh, if you uh, look into the 
uh, AI enabled products, like AI enabled products are um, a robot, right? So we, you, you might have seen Sophia, right? Sophia, where uh, humanoid robot we call, right? Humanoid robot. So um, you you might have heard about it, right? The Sophia, um, that is actually a enabled machine, a enabled machine, right? So where you you see uh, the different uh, um, domains of problems solved there, right? The, uh, the problems from in, uh, the speech, uh, that is understanding the text, right? Understanding the uh, speech and then giving the response, vision, uh, looking into the products, uh, objects, looking into the objects and understanding that vision problems are solved, speech problems are solved, right? So, and text problems, that is uh, reading the text and understanding, right? Uh, uh, or NLP, okay, natural language processing. So, this, this uh, set of problems that are solved, right? So, they are part of artificial intelligence, right? Because that is a huge it's a huge domain in which you, you see these kind of areas. Machine learning, it particularly talks about uh, solving the classification or regression clustering problems. Okay. Uh, deep learning also solves the same problem, the classification, regression, uh, clustering um, problems, right? In, uh, but, but the difference here is only the uh, data that is required, right? The data that, that is required is a main important uh, thing here, okay? So if you have um, uh, less amount of data and if you want to solve, probably you're going to use the machine learning, okay? Machine learning, okay? Uh, but if, if you have huge amount of data and then you want to uh, solve that problem, right? You have the huge amount of data and you want to solve the problem, then you are going to uh, use the deep learning, right? Uh, if you know about the concepts like transfer learning, right? Transfer learning. Uh, nowadays, like we are seeing most of the uh, most of the models that are actually built using the transfer learning, right? Uh, GPT. You might have seen the you heard about the GPT, the transformers we call, right? Uh, Bird models, GPT models. Okay, are um, uh, if you uh, look into the uh, Google Net, ResNet, and all, okay, all uh, these kind of models, okay, um, UNet, and so on. So all these are all actually uh, developed. Okay, these models are developed on the ImageNet, uh, which are related to the uh, um, image, okay, images. So and these BERT GPT models are. Uh, related to most of the times they are related to the text okay in the text domain and you are going to see them and uh, here uh, you are going to see them in the image domain right so all these are actually developed using um, the they are the deep learning models and actually they are from they are uh, uh, on the basis of transfer learning okay transfer learning that is training a model for to solve one problem and if you find any similar problem you are going to uh, use that uh, already trained model to solve your problem, okay? So um, that's the uh, difference here. So you are going to um, um, f find uh, the deep learning is also part of, uh, it's, a, it's a subset of machine learning, okay? So when you are solving the deep learning problem, you are indirectly solving the machine learning problem, okay? So uh, this is what we are talking about. Um, so it is actually the more is related to the uh, um, taking the time. Okay, how much time it takes to okay train the model, and how much data do you, you have to train the model? Okay, so based on these things, uh, okay, you can say that whether it is a machine learning or deep learning. So um, and and the important thing is like um, if if you it's it's not just the data, like you said, okay? It's not just the data, having the data or how much data, how much data you have. It's not about that, only about that, but it is also related to whether you have uh, predefined features or not, right? Predefined features or not, right? So if you have a tabular kind of data, tabular kind of data, then you can easily solve using the ML, machine learning, right? 
if you have the tabular kind of data, where I mean each column is represented as a feature, right? Each column is called a feature. But if you don't have such, if you don't have such, for example, images, right? In, if, if you take images, it is a collection of pixels. It's collection of pixels, right? I mean, you don't have specified features there, right? If you take audio, uh, it is collection of the phenoms, right? Um, the the frequency, right? So uh, again, it is not predefined features. You don't have the predefined uh, features there, right? So NLP, if you take the text also, you don't have predefined features there. If you if if this is your uh, data set. If you have this kind of data set where you don't have the predefined features, and the objective is uh, the features have to be features have to be identified by model. Okay, identified by model. If this is the scenario, then you are going to use the deep learning technique. Okay, you are going to use the deep learning technique where the deep learning model will help you to identify the features to identify the features that are required to solve your classification or regression problems, okay? That's important, the features place major. If you already have the predefined features, then you go and use machine learning techniques, okay? And, or if you have the, um, uh, if you don't have the predefined features, then you can use the deep learning, okay? Yeah, so keeping these things aside, uh, now we know the machine learning, deep learning, and so on. So uh, I will quickly talk about, okay, what are the libraries that we use to solve this, okay? So these are all the uh, libraries or softwares we use to solve any machine learning or deep learning problems. Okay, here we are just seeing the uh, libraries that are related to machine learning, but uh, uh, for deep learning you use the other um, libraries like uh, the uh, TensorFlow, right? TensorFlow, or uh, you use the PyTorch, or you use Keras, okay? So they are the libraries, uh, okay? Uh, very uh, um, frequently used libraries to solve deep learning problems, okay? Deep learning uh, problems, but, um, uh, other than, uh, I mean, if you just want to start, okay, um, before you get into the deep learning problems, if you just want to start, probably you can, uh, uh, you are going to use these uh, libraries very uh, frequently, like uh, the NumPy library, or you are going to use Pandas library, um, and you are going to use Matplotlib to visualize, okay, to visualize the data uh, and to generate the reports, okay. Uh, you're going to use pandas to lower the data and to manipulate the data. And you're going to use scikit-learn, okay, which is very much uh, important and very uh, uh, effective library, okay. So every data scientist will work on, or should, okay, will definitely work on the scikit-learn, right. So that is the machine learning library. So you are going to see the machine learning um, algorithms implemented, already implemented in the scikit-learn and we can just import them and you can start using them, right? Uh, the machine learning models, uh, the machine learning, machine learning models, are uh, the algorithms uh, like uh, um, decision trees, right? Decision trees are, uh, um, SVM are, okay, uh, logistic regression. So all these, I mean, uh, not only classification, uh, the regression uh, problems also like linear regression or clustering like uh, um, k-means clustering or okay hierarchical clustering. Uh, all these, uh, you take any problem, you take any um, any type of problem. So uh, you see the implementation of the those algorithms and models. Uh, implemented, already implemented in the scikit lab. okay? So this is the uh, machine learning library that you are going to use to uh, train the uh, models if you are solving the machine learning problem, right? So internally, like after you find out the, um, after you find out the uh, deep learn, uh, the features, okay? So 
uh, using it, these TensorFlow or PyTorch or Keras using these libraries. Uh, if you uh, find out the features, again, uh, that problem can be now converted to machine learning and then you can solve any one of these libraries uh, to uh, okay, solve the problem at the end. Okay, uh, uh, That is after you find out the features because having the features itself is a problem, right? So if you solve the problem of uh, finding the features, then you can again um, uh, come back to the machine learning models and then you can use these. So it, they are the important libraries uh, typically we use in the machine learning domain, uh, okay? So uh, these things like uh, I said, so uh, important stages uh, where uh, you, if you take any um, machine learning pipeline, uh, you're going to have the stages like the um, extract, transform, load, uh, that is loading the data, transforming the data, extracting the different the features, right? Uh, that is step one. Um, uh, that is one of the steps. And another one is data exploration. Like I said, visualizing the data, uh, you can use Zipon or Matplotlib to uh, visualize the data. There is a data exploration, uh, which is also called uh, EDA, right? Uh, it's called exploratory data analysis, right? Data analysis, uh, very important thing and most of the managers, right? Uh, are very much interested in this step, right? They want to find out the, um, the reports, okay? Um, so, so they want to know the reports. So that that is uh, very much used. Uh, that that can be done using these uh, Sipon and Matplotlib libraries in data exploration step. Uh, similarly, like data evaluation, like if you want to change the features or uh, update the features, you can use either NumPy or uh, TensorFlow. Uh, you you can use them. Uh, and data modeling. Modeling is here. Uh, nothing but training. If you want to train the models, uh, typically if it is a uh, uh, ML-related problems, you are going to use scikit-learn, okay? Um, and you can also uh, very old and effective uh, statistical methods, SM, right? Stats methods. So you can also use stats methods and uh, scipy, okay? Uh, scientific Python. So that is the training the models and predicting with that. And data presentation, if, if you want to uh, give any presentation uh, at the end, after you find out the uh, observations, after you solve the problem, if you want to report it to your manager or your uh, um, professor, then for the data presentation, you are going to use either Matplotlib okay, um, uh, to draw the plots, to draw the plots and generate the reports. So there are the typical uh, steps that you follow um, in the machine learning problem. And then you have the uh, various set of libraries that uh, that comes into the picture at each step. Okay. Um, here are the uh, important uh, um, the types of the problems uh, that you are going to solve, and that is by using the scikit-learn. Uh, I will just give you a demo here. Mm. Hope it works now. Yeah. So you are able to see my screen, right? Um, an interactive page I open here. You are able to see? Yes. 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 Okay. So this is uh, the machine learning that we are talking about. This is the machine learning that we are talking about where uh, it is a... Okay. Uh, it is the interactive uh, plot actually. So you have the supervised problems here and you have the unsupervised problems. You know what is supervised and unsupervised, right? 
So the major difference uh, comes when uh, if you have the label, okay, only the label plays major role. Uh, if you have it, okay, uh, if you have the label, then it is the supervised problem, right? And if you don't have it, then it is the unsupervised problem. So that is the uh, important uh, definition, right? Difference between the supervised and unsupervised problems. So uh, if you look into the various uh, algorithms here, the supervised and unsupervised. So within the supervised, uh, you can see the classification, regression, uh, important things, right? This you might have, uh, you are very much familiar to this. So what are the uh, classification and regression problems, right? Again, what is the difference between classification and regression? The major difference is uh, in the classification, uh, if your predicted label, right? The predicted label, label is uh, uh, discrete, right? If it is a discrete, uh, then you are going to say that is a classification problem, right? So that is a classification problem. And uh, if, if you are uh, um, the predicted label, the predicted output or label is uh, the continuous. Continuous, then it is a regression problem, right? So that means if you are going to predict the salary, like 10.5 lakhs is the salary or 11.2 uh, is the salary, right? So this is the, uh, the continuous output, right? Uh, and uh, classification, like if you say, uh, it is the okay having the disease or not covid is there or not okay is you are you affect the patient is affected by covid or not yes so if covid, COVID is positive covid is uh, positive the output is positive then you have the covid and if the output is negative you don't have the covid right so then there are the discrete values so if, if you are uh, finding uh, if the output is discrete like you have only uh, these two or three, that means the finite values, okay? The predefined finite values, then it is a classification problem. If, if your output is predicted output is continuous, then it is a regression problem. So we are going to see the both here, classification and regression, right? So this is a classification, this is a regression. So within the classification, you see various um, uh, the algorithms, right? Uh, where Various problems that are solved here. You have the support vector machines, um, very effective. Uh, you can solve linear and nonlinear problems. And you have naive base, right? You can solve the uh, probability. Uh, you can solve the problems that are based on the probability, probability, right? And you have the decision trees, uh, which actually generates the rules. Uh, and then you can also see the, uh, the thing called feature importance, right? If you have, 10 features, which features are playing major role in taking the decision, right? They are called feature importance. So you are going to, you can check, uh, you can get the feature importance using this uh, decision trees and uh, random forest collection of decision trees, right? Uh, maybe I can include this. Yeah, so random forest collection of decision trees, uh, add a boost, gradient boosting, XG boost, K nearest neighbors, very uh, very simple and effective, right? Very, we start uh, learning machine learning using KNN, right? So very simple and very effective to get the benchmark, benchmark results first, okay? So like this, uh, all these are all classification problem from algorithms uh, to solve the classification problems. And when you uh, come to the down here, um, so these are the classification problems. And when you uh, come to the regression, uh, the same, uh, whatever the set uh, that you have seen, uh, okay, if the output is continuous, then we call it is a regression problem. You see the same random forest regression. You see the decision tree regression, okay? Uh, so the same uh, algorithms that are actually used for solving the classification problem, with minor changes, okay, with minor changes, minor implementation, they also can solve the regression problems. 
okay so the linear regression and the support vector regression uh, so there are the regression problems uh, the, so the regression algorithms that can be used to solve the regression problems so um yeah so that's about this um so when you talk about the unsupervised, uh, you see the uh, the clustering problems very important, very important clustering problems, right? So you see the clustering algorithms like K-means algorithms and uh, Gaussian mixture models, um, very old and effective again GMM Gaussian mixture models. Okay, uh, DB scan, distributed scan, uh, which actually solves the K-means side effects side effects of the k-means, right? And hierarchical agglomerative or uh, um, uh, divisive, okay? Divisive clustering, agglomerative clustering problems with that there. So basically, you know, like the clustering is, uh, it's an unsupervised problem, right? Where you don't have the labels, but you want to find out the pattern, okay? Uh, important thing is to find out the hidden pattern. Find out the hidden pattern, you're going to see, you're going to use the, uh, clustering algorithms, right? So that means uh, given any document, for example, if given any document, you want to find out whether it is a political document or it is a uh, business business document, right? And so on. So like this, you have the various um, clusters. So and to which cluster it fits. So that is the thing, right? Uh, you might have seen uh, in mail, right? If you find out the Gmail, if you observe the Gmail uh, very closely, you are going to see uh, the labels like uh, personal um, and then um, uh, social, promotional, right? Like, like this, you are going to see the different categories here, right? So that means uh, given your mail, okay, whatever the mail comes to your uh, inbox, yeah, it should be whether it should send to the social or it is it should send to the promotional or it should send to the personal, right? So you are going to uh, check, okay? Uh, you are going to see uh, the terms. What are the terms that are actually uh, appearing in the mail? What are the words that are occurring in the mail that are there in the mail? So based on that, you are going to uh, say whether it is a personal um, email or the, it is the uh, social email or promotional email, right? So like this, you are going to have the yeah. So like this, you are going to have the uh, various um, uh, different types. So that is the uh, the, the difference between clustering and classification, right? So, um, well, so um, we try to see this, uh, the introduction to this uh, AML, uh, which are part of this, uh, um, based on the data, based on the labels, how do we, uh, okay, uh, uh, separate, how do we bifurcate uh, the uh, problems into various uh, domains. Yeah, so um, for now, that's it uh, from my end. Uh, like, uh, if, if you have any questions for this uh, session, so we can now discuss. Uh, is that okay? Manjan, sir, are you there? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Uh, will you take a break, sir, uh, five to 10 minutes? Yeah, uh, but uh, if they have any questions uh, for this session particularly, so we can. Uh, the, the interaction session we have the at the end, sir. Okay, right. Yeah. So will you take five to ten minutes break? Yeah. Okay, dear participant, stay back. Uh, we will start the eight five. Okay, na eight five. Now you have. Uh... Okay, thank you.
So welcome back, dear participant. Um, <laughs> so tomorrow we have the uh, good session. So artificial intelligence uh, in the agriculture sector, so applications, case studies, research directions. So for uh, interested uh, to do research uh, in agriculture using uh, AI, so it is useful for <coughs> research. So, so please attend tomorrow also. Sir Ramakrishna, sir, please share the uh, PPT, sir. Yeah, hi, thanks, my name is sir. So, um, thanks for that. So, uh, so for this, actually, I don't have any uh, PPT because it is general uh, discussion that we are going to have. So, I just want to um, share my um, experience and then uh, uh, various resources from where you can, uh, um, I mean, uh, this is self study material, like from where you can get. Uh, good uh, material or the resources where you can refer to um, um, either to teach to the students or to learn by, for your, by yourself and so on, right? So it is a generic session. So um, hope that is okay to you. So I'll just... Uh, um, you can share the, that word while we, uh, what you are typing. So it is... Uh... Huh. Comfortable. I, I, I'll share the session. I mean, I, I'll share the screen. Okay, yeah, I'll share the screen. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, like I said, this is the generic. Uh, uh, general uh, session. Uh, I'm not talking about any particular things. So I'm just talking about the um, about the useful resources. Okay. So like I said, uh, the scikit uh, that we use to uh, solve the or uh, train the machine learning problems. So uh, that, that is in the Py, uh, Python. So this is the, hope you are able to see my screen, right? Web page. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so here, uh, uh, this is a circuit land web page where you can see, uh, you can also, um, uh, look into the sample implementations, right? Sample implementations to solve the, uh, the classification problems or regression problems or clustering problems. So you see the, uh, the algorithms that are implemented uh, in SVM, nearest neighbors, random forest, right? Like I said, uh, the identifying uh, which category an object belongs to is the classification problem and the predicting a continuous valued attribute associated with an object is called regression problem. That's the continuous value. And clustering is automatic grouping of similar objects into sets based on the patterns is called clustering. Okay, so here you can see the scikit-learn is the home page. So similarly, uh, we also see the, uh, the uh, TensorFlow. So this is the um, TensorFlow library that we use for the deep learning. Right, so TensorFlow for the deep uh, to solve the deep learning problems. Uh, this is uh, a deep learning library. So you can uh, you can get the um, here you can see the various uh, uh, sections where you can actually um, learn the uh, TensorFlow or the sample implementations and so on. Right, so. Um, and similarly, we have the PyTorch. So this is the PyTorch library, uh, um, the documentation page where you can uh, use this PyTorch library for the deep learning model implementation. 
So you can see the left side, you can see uh, the tutorials page, uh, introduction to PyTorch, uh, where you can actually um, try to implement the simple uh, image image classification mod okay um, model you can build the image classification model and then um, uh, okay you can actually deploy that um, and then use that okay to solve any problem so uh, the tensorflow pytorch uh, are very uh, frequently and um, very well used um, on top of the tensorflow and uh, pytorch we have the keras also uh, so which actually make makes use of the uh, tensorflow or the uh, pytorch as the back backend okay backend so well, we have the K keras um, um okay so um, you can also use um, um keras uh, as a researcher you can use or as a software uh, developer or the data scientist as a data scientist you can use or as a researcher you can use so it it perfectly works uh, for the deploy okay the model to be de deployed in the production also right so you can gen you can actually train the models that can be deployed in the production uh, it's not just for the research purpose you can also um, use this for the uh, commercial right? so these three are uh, important uh, deep learning libraries right um so um so coming to um the places where you can actually practice the deep learning and uh, um, uh, machine learning, right? So how many of you know Google Colab? Uh, maybe if you are very, um, if you are actively listening to the session, probably you can just uh, mention in the chat, okay? So um, how many of you know Google Colab? Very famous right Every, everybody will know about this so um, google collab actually provides uh, provides the environment where you can actually uh, use you, you can use the uh, machine you can you can use the machine learning and deep learning models to train right so uh, as a student you can use or as a data scientist you can use or as a ai researcher also you can use Okay, because it actually provides these things. Okay, so you can e uh, easily access uh, to the GPU for free of cost, but there is a condition like you cannot uh, train um, the models um, hours together, right? So typically um, you can only train up to, to, to 24 hours or uh, the given quota is exhausted. Okay, you cannot continuously use, but there is a Google Colab Pro where you can uh, update, uh, upgrade to Colab Pro and that uh, uh, that gives the feature to train your model more than 24 hours, okay? So um, th this is the place where you can actually uh, write, write your machine learning and deep learning code and practice, right? So if you go to the runtime here, uh, if you go to the uh, here you can see the GPU, TPU, right? So either you can train the models on the GPU or you can train and train the models on the TPU. Okay. So um, the models that are, um, um, if you have the huge amount of data and then uh, you are training the model, if you use the GPU, the parallel execution happens actually, right? So there will be number of workers or number of jobs parameter where you mentioned like I want to um, I want to train uh, parallelly, right? Uh, on three cores and four cores, uh, cores, right? Cores, uh, the processors cores we call, right? So you can train, uh, you can do the parallel execution, parallel training. So that's where the the training quickly uh, happens. So you can use the uh, um, GPU or TPU, so which which are actually um, provided for you for free of cost. Okay. So this is one of the place where you can um, okay do the um, um, implementation of machine learning and deep learning. Okay. And are you aware of uh, Amazon SageMaker, AWS SageMaker? Any one of you? I mean, any of you have used this?
Okay, so Amazon SageMaker also, it provides uh, uh, environment where you can actually uh, implement your ML and DL. Okay, um, that basically the, uh, you can do the data scientist tasks. Um, I, again, it is uh, for free of cost. Okay, you just have to, uh, you have to uh, raise the request, okay? So you have to raise the request to provide an account for you to use. Um, so have you ever used any one of you? So uh, no. it's it's just okay. It is just like uh, um, Google Collab only, but it is uh, from the um, uh, AWS. Okay, uh, uh, AWS uh, Amazon Web Services. So they also um, they also provide the um, uh, a Amazon uh, SageMaker Studio for free of cost. Okay, so um, what you can do is um, you can just uh, uh, raise a request uh, to uh, provide uh, access to that. So you have to create an account, and then uh, with that account you can actually uh, use that Amazon SageMaker Studio. Okay, so let's AWS. Uh, Okay, so you can see the free machine learning development environment that provides the compute, storage, and security to learn and experiment with ML. Okay, so that is the important. Uh, um, this is one of the important place where you can do the same uh, practicing ML and DL. Okay. So I hope this is also useful to you. Uh, th this is the uh, um, yeah overview of that. So Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab, a free no configuration machine learning service like uh, Google Colab. You have to access with this studio lab .aws, and it provides uh, to either GPU or CPU. So if you want to train deep learning models, okay, you can use four hour GPU session for deep learning or else if you just want to try uh, ML related things, so you can uh, use 12 hour GPU uh, session, okay, 12 hour GPU, CPU sessions uh, for that. Um, you can also uh, clone the repositories from GitHub. Okay, uh, if you already have a repository existing in the GitHub, you can clone it and you can start working on that. You can um, also push the code to GitHub. Uh, it is It runs on the Jupyter server, uh, like Google Colab. Okay, it runs on the Jupyter um, server and Jupyter notebooks. So you can also have these snapshots uh, saved. You will have 15 GB free storage. So you can save that. Um, the work that you have done uh, and then you can again resume the work next day okay tomorrow and once you are uh, uh, once you train the models and then uh, it's working fine you can simply uh, convert that into the production okay because uh, Amazon AWS SageMaker is one of the service uh, one of the services uh, uh, by AWS cloud uh, for the data scientists. So if you want to deploy any uh, models, uh, for example, the face mask detection model or the social distance uh, finding model like that, I mean, simple use cases I'm saying. So if you want to uh, deploy that in the cloud and provide uh, endpoint, right, uh, to your uh, uh, friends or clients, okay, you can do that. But for that, uh, it is charged, okay, it is charged. Uh, but if you create uh, an account, <laughs> if you create an account in AWS, you will get uh, uh, some free credits. Okay, so I think you get a um, uh, few dollars, three hundred dollars, I think. So you get uh, free credits. So you can start using those uh, free credits until it exhausts. 
you can try various uh, services in that okay so but for that you have to provide the credit card information you have to create an account to credit provide the credit card information uh, but uh, mm, until until the free credits exhaust uh, you will not be charged okay so only after that only you, you will be charged okay so that is one important thing um so you have that is a, a SageMaker Studio Lab. So yeah, I shared that reference to you. Uh, this is one thing. And have you heard of Kaggle? Kaggle? Okay. So uh, this is the place where again, uh, you can actually um, start uh, working. Uh, that means you can also uh, use this environment for uh, uh, training your ML and DL models. And the advantage with this is uh, you can also participate in the competitions, right? So you can also participate in the competitions. Uh, you can also host the competitions. Um, you can see here, uh, NFL Big Data Bowl 2023, it is uh, um, $100,000, right? And $55,000. So you can participate in these environments. Uh, it is it's optional, but uh, you can, the advantage here is you can also participate in, in these uh, uh, competitions and uh, Okay, you can uh, see. Um, okay, uh, the you can also measure your uh, knowledge and uh, uh, the expertise level. But the uh, point to discuss here is uh, yes, you can also uh, use this environment to uh, practice A and ML. Okay, so these these people also provides the and uh, free GPU, free TPU like Google Colab. Uh, you can start. Uh, uh, using this okay and the another advantage is uh, you can also uh, directly access the data sets okay you find the uh, huge number of data sets here uh, from the computer science from education and so on so you can see all these data sets are freely available to you okay so you have the COVID-19 data set you have the Airbnb data set and so on uh, so based on your interest either it is a image data set or text data set Okay, now uh, you can uh, directly access these data sets and then uh, start working on it. Okay, so uh, here actually I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to give a second. Yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I'm actually uh, uh, thinking about uh, okay uh, uh, about you as a faculty uh, uh, so that you can uh, encourage the students to okay uh, take part uh, or I mean provide these at least these references so that they will get benefit. Okay. Uh, instead of uh, um, struggling for where to find how to practice and so on. So I thought this will be. Uh, useful to you because you know uh, in the beginning even uh, we struggled a lot like uh, how to okay where to practice how to do that so um, providing the um, uh, proper information guidance is uh, actually a, a crucial part right so um, very important thing also so that's where I uh, suggest I mean I thought okay I thought of telling out of my experience I thought of providing these references to you um, so hope it will it is uh, 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 you will get benefited out of it okay so here are, uh, in Kaggle also you can do that so these three are very important Google Colab uh, AWS SageMaker Studio Lab and the Kaggle so these three places are uh, where you can actually practice ML and DL uh, uh, algorithms you can implement so uh, coming to the cloud uh, you have the uh, the cloud providers like Azure. Um, um, so uh, Azure ML Studio is one of the uh, important uh, 
uh, cloud provider okay so you can actually uh, use this uh, for the um, doing the um, cloud related uh, things okay so why i'm saying this one is uh, when i actually uh, when we interview the candidates for the um, for the freshers or for the experience okay nowadays uh, having the cloud experience is uh, becoming the mandatory okay one of the important things so um so what i uh, feel is like uh, even even uh, uh, for you also like uh, if you don't know much about the coding right so everyone need not be a developer to um, exp uh, to work in aml domain right even uh, the uh, candidates from outside um, out of development uh, programming also can actually use this okay so that's where if you um, uh, if you want to practice if you want to learn the aml uh, not write, not uh, by writing the code uh, but it is just plug and play right so you just have to uh, put the components together uh, provide your data and see the outputs that's it right so that is also pretty much possible so if you want to look into the um uh, cloud providers uh, who provides this uh, plug and play things so one of the important thing important provider is your uh, uh, azure okay microsoft it's by microsoft so uh, you can just look into this um, um and then you can see uh, there is a um, uh, ml okay um, the ML service that provides by Azure, where you can just uh, do the plug and play. So you uh, take the data set and then you trade the model. Okay. So you can uh, connect the uh, data set with the model, uh, you train the model, you deploy the model. So all these, all these things with minimum code. Okay. With minimum code, uh, you can solve any problem. Okay. So that is the um, uh, um, the a cloud provider uh, who, who offers this uh, by Microsoft, okay? So, um, you have the, uh, you have the courses also here, so you can actually check like, uh, you can also, if you, if you want, you can also do the certification, so, which actually adds value, right? I think uh, you also have the things in the uh, curriculum, and right? um the cloud um cloud com cloud um yeah cloud computing are the cloud related uh, cloud providers uh, in as part of the curriculum um right so this is about the azure but aws also same um aws also provides the same uh, um Yeah, AWS also provides the uh, machine learning and artificial, uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, services uh, and the important uh, services, the, the SageMaker, uh, which I said. Um, so you can actually uh, create an account in uh, Azure or you can create an account in uh, AWS. Um, both offers uh, free credits. You need not to worry about uh, um, the charges. Uh, so you can also um, try um, try the AWS uh, machine learning services. Okay. So um, again, uh, if you are not uh, a uh, if you are not a uh, uh, developer, uh, but still you can uh, use this um, cloud provider services uh, by Azure or AWS or uh, Google also GCP. Um, I, for research purpose also you can do that right so um, gcp yeah so google google also provides uh, the aml uh, services okay so um, nowadays uh, chatbots are uh, uh, very popular right so uh, you can uh, you can see uh, the chatbots already implemented in uh, um google which is called dialogue flow uh, in uh, aws which is called lex 
right? So uh, they are already implemented. If you want to uh, develop any product or if you want to uh, do any research, right? Uh, any research work or if you want to, um, if you find any uh, interesting topic and that you want to explore uh, in cloud, probably you can use uh, either of these three, okay? So that is one. Um, I, I found very uh, important things to mention. Okay, so both three cloud providers. So they are about the uh, AWS cloud providers. Okay, and um, uh, coming to the, uh, if, if you want to refer any AML references, uh, I have a uh, um, couple of uh, important resources where you can get uh, AML related uh, notebooks or uh, 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 references. So one is this where, so here you can find the Python data science handbook or oil mentor of Python. Uh, so if you want to explore more about um, data science and you want to start practicing, Okay, so you can use this reference uh, where uh, you see most of the, uh, okay, algorithms are already implemented. Uh, you have the examples, right? You have the examples. Yeah, I mean, it might be useful for you to, for the class purpose. Okay, so you can see the, uh, so kind of what is the machine learning or uh, uh, introduction to scikit-learn, implementation of the naive base, linear regression, support vector machines, random forest, showcase okay, k-means. So if you want to learn these uh, concepts uh, in depth, uh, maybe you can uh, try these references, okay? So you can find a very interesting material um, here, okay? So it is to learn by yourself or to teach to your students. So I thought it is uh, useful for you, okay? So this is uh, one of the important reference to have. And another one is, So they are actually top rated and very um, highly referred. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to re refer these things. And I found, uh, I, have, I have gone through these and I found very useful uh, as a beginner uh, when I started practicing. So uh, if you want, you can also try these things. Um, so Machine Learning with Paita Chain Scikit-Learn is the book. And earlier you had uh, uh, Data Science Hands book, right? Uh, by J100 plus, and this is by Sebastian Dashka. So you can also see here um, various uh, topics that are covered. Uh, it is to learn, so training machine learning algorithms for classification and uh, using how to use the scikit-learn. Um, you can also see the deep learning. Um, um, going deeper, the mechanics of PyTorch, how to use PyTorch, okay? Um, implementing a multi-layer artificial neural network from scratch, okay? And clustering, so you can find, I think, uh, you also have a very advanced concepts like GAN, generative adversarial networks, okay? Uh, and then you also have the transformers, uh, like I said, BERT, uh, GPT, right? So if you want to enhance your um deep learning skills uh, to advance a level so maybe you can use this so reinforcement learning for decision making so all this uh, you have the uh, theoretical concepts as well as the code examples also uh, you also have the notebooks so um, if you go into this uh, you can find the implemented notebooks okay so all i all are uh, uh, ipython notebooks so i think uh, you can load them in google collab or you can load them in the AWS Sage Maker Lab. Okay, so both are uh, both supports this. You just have to clone the GitHub repos and then um, and then you can just clone them. Okay, so you just have to do this. So copy this URL, git clone, 
and provide that uh, you will be getting this um, data okay these things into your direct into your uh, drive okay uh, in, into your environment automatically so these two are uh, um, important uh, references where you can find the um, important stuff to learn AML, right? Okay, so um, so the um, Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so if you want to, um, do you know any, um, any reference where you can get the data sets? Anyone have you heard of this UCI repository? Yeah. Good. So I think a few of you might be finding this as the repeated boring, right? Uh, but considering the other uh, participants, I think at least uh, um, the other participants are uh, finding it uh, useful. Uh, I hope so. Okay, so this is the uh, UCI repository where you can um, get the various data sets. Okay, so you can. Um, You can find the, the data sets that are available here. So it is just like you have to uh, go through this uh, um, place where you can you can see uh, the data sets that are classic that are categorized uh, into classification, into regression, into clustering, right? So based on this, you can uh, um, either you can take up a classification data set to practice or regression data set to practice, right? So uh, all these are all the classification data sets. Okay, so we have these 466 data sets and uh, these are 151 data sets which are uh, uh, regression related data sets. Okay, so um, if you are interested, you can, uh, I mean, if you are looking for the data sets, you can also um, go to Kaggle or you can come to UCA repositories and you can get the data sets from here. Okay. Yeah, that is the um, data sets part uh, if you want to have. Okay. So finally, um, like I have the couple of uh, resources where you can actually uh, this is for again your because most of the participants are from academics. So I found uh, if I share these references to you, you will be using them in your uh, uh, teaching, right? So this is a place where you can um, uh, just check like uh, what is the kernel, how it applies, okay, how do you um, uh, use the kernels, okay, how it affects. So Yesterday we were talking about the uh, deep learning, right? Image processing. So applying the kernel on the image. So this is the uh, Bell image, uh, and then we are applying the filter blur. Uh, blur indicates uh, all ones in the three by three kernel. Uh, you can also use uh, sharpen, right? So sharpen. This is the original image left side, and right side you have the sharpen image. That means. Uh, if you want to sharpen the image, you have to use these uh, values as the kernel kernel values. Uh, of course, they are learned over a period, but uh, just to explain about the kernels, maybe you can use this. Um, uh, you can explain various uh, kernels, how it affects a given image. Okay, so I this is to 
um, know how the kernel works and how it uh, uh, changes the output. So if you are interested, maybe you can take this reference. And, and this also for kernels. <clears throat> and have you ever seen these references? I'm not sure, but if you are uh, uh, searching in any time, okay, how do I visualize? Okay, uh, the image processing, um, because it is very hard to imagine, right? Hard to visualize what happens uh, uh, when you're training the deep learning model. It is completely black box, right? We don't know what what goes on inside the model. Uh, we only know what image we are giving and uh, and we only know what output we are getting, right? So, but, but to um, see what happens uh, for the given images, um, when you are applying this, uh, this is also again to um, explain about the kernels on the uh, given images. So um, you can um, also use this for your um, for teaching purpose. So. Yeah, so we see the given image. So you can also upload the image and see what happens. Uh, but it, here it is on the given image, how it is working. So if you find it useful, you can have in your list. I'm sharing them in the chat box. Okay, uh, if you want, you can just collect it from there. So this is the place where you can um, uh, you can explain like I mean uh, it is to understand how uh, the training takes place, right? How the uh, law uh, values gets updated, right? Over the period when you are training the model, how the values gets updated, how the loss is calculated, and how the loss is getting minimized uh, over the period. So how the weights are changing. So these things, uh, it is the um, live live demo. Um, so maybe you can use this for the um, reference again. Okay. Yeah. So how? Uh, um, I have a few more resources for uh, uh, classification and clustering. So maybe if you are interested, you can uh, write a mail to me. I'll try to provide them. Uh, I'm not covering here um, because of the time. But if you are interested, you can just write a mail to this. I'll try to provide those references links. Okay. So coming to the last part, uh, if you are interested, uh, like how to um, um, clone the repositories you were uh, to your Google Drive and use them, right? Um, how to clone the repositories to your Google Drive and uh, use them? Okay. Did uh, how many of you have tried? How many of you do this regularly? Cloning the repositories. Uh, typically, you find them in the GitHub repo, right? GitHub repo. And how do you get the, uh, like I, I've shared two uh, references here, right? So if you want to work on this, uh, how do you actually do this? You want to work on this in your Google Drive, in Google Colab. Cloning the repository. Okay. I'm not sure like how many of you are interested, but I will quickly tell you uh, how to do that. Instead of uh, just uploading and downloading, so what you can do is, so this is the Google Colab notebook uh, i'm just trying to uh, demo you 
uh, how to uh, not only GitHub repositories, any content that is online. Yeah. Any any data data set from Kaggle also, okay? From Kaggle also, you can directly take the data set to your collab. Okay, you need not to download and upload. You can directly uh, get it in onto the drive. So yeah, so what you can do is when you do uh, when you run the collab, the left side you can see uh, a folder called sample data, right? A folder called sample data is already there, but uh, if you clone into this sample data, uh, this is like a RAM, right? You don't see this uh, when you close the session or when you close the browser, okay? Or tomorrow, if you come back and open, you don't see uh, the data because uh, whatever you are doing here, importing here will be deleted, okay? So what? You have to do is you have to mount the drive. Okay, you have to mount the drive. And for that, what you can do is simply you can, yeah, you can check here one option mount drive, right? So you can simply click on this mount drive and you can see. If you click on this mount to drive, you can actually ask you, it will ask you to uh, authenticate. Okay, the Google Drive is from Google. Uh, again, Google Collab is also from Google, but to communicate to each the, both the services, uh, it, it asks you to provide the uh, mounting. So here, uh, left side, you can uh, just uh, see here uh, the mount to drive button. If you click on that uh, and it will be mounted okay or if you want to write through code you can just say from google that collab import drive and you have to mount it okay mount and give it some name here some name and what is the name that is given is drive okay because it is mounted with the drive name uh, so this is the code that you are going to use to mount the drive okay so after you mount the drive you have to um, you have to uh, you can go inside okay you can go inside the drive and you can check okay uh, this is actually uh, uh, it is looking into your uh, google drive okay so if you go here uh, if you go to my drive, so this is a my drive, right? So this my drive is what you are seeing here, this my drive. Uh, whatever the content that you see here in my drive, uh, that is actually visible here, okay? That is actually here, here, you can see, okay? So you can also create one uh, folder here, new folder, and then mention it is demo, okay? So you just open this demo and you can create, you can create, um, yeah, inside the demo, uh, okay, to give the path here, you can just say copy path and you're not changing the directory, right? You can do CD, changing the directory. So you can, you have to go to that particular directory that you have created. And then if you want to see what is there in inside, so it is, nothing is here as of now. Okay, so you have the um, no content inside this. But now what we are trying to do here is, uh, we are trying to clone this. Okay, so if you want to, um, try and this Python data science handbook. Okay. So what you can do is just, uh, you have to take this uh, URL. Okay. So take this URL and uh, there is a command card git clone, right? You know, cloning the repository, right? So git clone, provide this uh, uh, 
repository. Okay. Yeah, it says uh, it is cloned into the Python data science handbook and then it is done, 100% is done. Now you can check, okay. You can see the Python data science handbook folder. So whatever you see here in the Python data science handbook. Uh, so this is uh, there in your drive, okay. So you can check here. Python data science handbook. Okay, so you have got this content here, this content notebooks tools website here. So what you can do is simply go to this and then, okay, Python data science book. Go here and simply what you can do is you can open any open any notebook, right? So let us take one simple. So we'll take this introduction to scikit-learn. Okay, so what you can do is, so you can either you can, you can go here. So in the my drive in demo in this, you have the notebooks. So inside the notebooks, you have these um, notebooks already there. We are trying to check one simple notebook introduction to scikit-learn, right? So just you can directly double click on this, or you can do right click, open with Google Collaboratory. Google, okay. So you you can see the notebook uh, that is opening up here. Yeah, so introduction to scikit-learn. Uh, this is a notebook. So what you can do is simply uh, start, okay, uh, going through this notebook. You can, you can practice on these notebooks. Uh, you can see the code already implemented, but if you want to tweak the code, understand the code, change the things, so you can start doing here, okay? Yeah, you can start doing here. So this is how you can directly uh, get, uh, if you find any uh, resources useful to you, and if it is there in the GitHub, uh, simply you can do these steps that we have done so far. Uh, simply you just have to uh, uh, clone it, okay? But if you clone without mounting, if you clone without mounting, you cannot see this tomorrow, okay? Whatever the folder that we are seeing now here, this folder, you cannot see it tomorrow uh, without mounting, okay? So you have to mount and go inside the drive, my drive, create a directory, and then inside that, if you clone, and this will be there with you forever, okay? So that is the thing you just have to remember, and then you can start practicing, okay? So, yeah, so so that's what uh, I thought of covering. Um, you now you can start experimenting on these things. Okay, so that's it from my hand. Uh, now, if you have any questions, we'll discuss. Any questions? Okay, dear participant, uh, do you have any queries? Uh, please uh, ask, or you enter the chat box. Yeah. 
okay if you don't have any questions uh, we are going to uh, summarize the session we are going to close the session okay so participants yeah just uh before that i just want to find out like uh, um, is there anyone who got benefited out of this or it is just a repeated content you can frankly say your opinion so i don't mind because i thought it is uh, uh so i'll find the students as well as faculty as a participants but i see most of the faculty here okay uh, shall i summarize the session sir uh, yeah yeah okay. so Thank you, sir. You are a wonderful session for a given uh, <clears throat> different topics. Uh, what is the history of an AI? What is the importance of AI? And that uh, data, what is memory processing? And the comparison of AI, ML, DEP learning. So classification of learning. And what are the tools? What are the libraries? So th th these things are very important for who are working. Uh, initially started starting the and uh, in the second sessions you, are, you have given different uh, things uh, collapse or keras and sensor flow and uh, different things so i hope the participants are uh, benefited for the session so thank you sir once again accepting our request now uh, yeah, the uh, accept our token of appreciation, sir. Yeah, thanks, Manjam, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, uh, giving this opportunity and then uh, uh, getting interacted with the um, various uh, uh, the participants from various domains, various fields. Um, so I'm really happy to uh, have this session. So in, in case if, if you uh, need any further uh, information, uh, if you want to have any further discussion, so please feel free to write uh, to my mail ID, or you can just, uh, uh, you can also, um, I'm just posting my mail ID here in case if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, communicate it further. So I'll be really happy to help you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Manya. Uh, Dear participant, uh, so then we are going to close the session.